Hello there. Today's episode of Separate Bathrooms contains discussions of suicide and mental ill health. If this raises any issues for you, support is available through the following services. Call Lifeline on 13 11 14 or visit lifeline.org.au. Call Beyond Blue on 1300 224 636 or visit beyondblue.org.au forward slash forums. Call Men's Line Australia on 1300 789 978 or visit mensline.org. All the information we just listed will also be available in the show notes of this episode. Felicity made the invitation. Why don't you stop in, bring your guitar, and uh, we'll have a go at writing a song together. So uh, I did that, and I don't think I ever left. There'd been some personal tragedy and some upheaval in each of our lives. We just saw something in each other that was there was light, there was love, there was something beautiful and something to build on, and that's mm. what we both wanted. Hello and welcome to Separate Bathrooms. We would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional custodians of this land, and pay our respects to the elders both past and present. Cameron Datto with you. Uh, with his wife, Ali Datto. <laughs> <And> alongside me. <laughs> <laughs> Long time partner. Yeah. Now we're jumping on the country bandwagon this week with a chat to a couple of Aussie country music icons in the making. Or are they in the making or are they already there? Well, I'm kind of going iconic status comes sort of towards the end and these guys oh, are I like, see what you're they're saying. Really, they're on the journey. Yep, yep. And they're making they beautiful sure music. Are. And they've Big been time. at it for a while. Yes, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think together they are icons in the making. Oh, I love I say it. that with, with the deepest respect. Absolutely. Well, Felicity Urquhart has been a part of the tapestry of the country music industry in Australia for three decades Eight albums, extensive touring of Australia, 13 Golden Guitar Awards, ARIA nominations, countless festival appearances, touring with acts like Willie Nelson, Willie Nelson, Waylon <laughs> Jennings, Cheryl Crow, Don Williams, and of course, most recently, Aussie legends, the Whitlam's Black Stump Band. Along with her music success, Felicity has captivated audiences with her personality and presenting skills on TV. She's been seen on Sydney Weekender and ABC's Backroads, the much-loved host of ABC Saturday Night Country as well. Beside her is a multi-aria winner, acclaimed guitarist, singer-songwriter Josh Cunningham, OG member of The Waifs. He struck up a connection with Felicity and they began writing songs together. And Josh has had some remarkable successes too. He's toured with Titans in the music industry. Bob Dylan. Doesn't get bigger than that. Mic drop. Yeah. Billy Bragg, our very own Keith Urban, has been inducted into the Australian Songwriters Association Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. In 2021, Felicity and Josh released the stunningly beautiful debut album, The Song Club, which entered the Aria Country Music album charts at number one and was nominated for four golden guitars and an aria, and their latest album is called Birdsong. There's a lot more to their love story. Let's find out more about Felicity and Josh. Felicity Urquhart and Josh Cunningham, welcome to the bathroom, you two. <laughs> Thank you. Are you enjoying this? Fresh sanitizer. There's some lovely perfume. Smelling. Yes, indeed, indeed. The, but the, but the, I believe there's some musical instruments that may be entering the bathroom at some point. Which and and the bathroom is renowned for its acoustics. When that it comes is to true. Musical instruments. That you is true. Gonna say it, I Do was you find say. you sound better when you sing in the shower or in the bathroom? Does it sound better to you? A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Really? You totally think you're a rock star in the bathroom. <laughs> this may be a bit too much information, but the shower is not my preferred bathroom location. Sitting on the John is actually when, <laughs> when the magic really happens as really? far as you know, guitar playing and songwriting and the like. Well, there, there's uh, a lot more projection from the on the, yeah. the toilet. Yeah. How do we, we wow, how, how do we, we get straight there? We, we jump we? straight in, but I, I will say there's not a bathroom in the world that will ever make my voice sound good. So oh, I'm, I'm glad you all, you all singers here. Yeah, I'm, I'm amongst three musicians now. I'm the odd one out. That's okay. Yeah, not everyone has a voice, Alison. So, you know, Ooh. Cam, I'm sure she's great. Thank you, Felicity. 
of you can stay. But I, I was been saying it for thirty freaking years. She'll go. Oh, I'm a yeah. terrible singer. Yeah, but I heard her sing. Like, okay, so she, <laughs> Ali, Ali taught a kindergarten class in the United States, and she sung for that class. And me oh. and our three kids were there to hear her sing, and it was the sweetest oh. sound. Oh God! It was so beautiful. It was only when I she. Bet. It was only when she was doing the hand puppets. And she was shaking so much. She was holding Mary. And, yeah, and it was a Christmas. It was a Christmas show, thing, and she was holding ba- holding Mary. And I ended up going thinking that was the coolest thing. So we named my new band Shaky Mary after after <laughs> Alex. Yeah. My inspiration. She was shaking yeah, cool. so much from singing. She's your muse. Okay, oh. so let's let's dive into you two. You are both in the country music circle. You've been in country music for many years. You must have known about each other, but then how did it come that you got together? Well, I'm well and truly cemented in the country music scene. Josh was more of a dabbler because he's more of the blues roots with right. his band The Waves the for 30 mm-hmm. something years. Mm. Mm-hmm. Still a spring chicken, though. Uh, but we would run into each other at different festivals around the country and more of the sort of folkish festivals, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was. But all, all these genres of music, they're all in the same family, I think. Um, you know, we're all telling stories and just writing simple music from uh, that down to earth from the heart place. And I think I always appreciated that in Felicity's music. And indeed, she was a, a radio presenter as well for a decade. And I used to hear her on the radio and I could tell, yeah, she's a real nice person, that Felicity. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then when I bumped into her from time to time at festivals and the like, it, it only confirmed that suspicion. At what point did you realise this is more than just, we're more than just friends? Was it, was it at the same moment for both of you or did one of you realise it first? Well, I think it was a, a simultaneous experience. We were both, we had our own lives and uh, we had been invited into a thing called the Song Club, which was a really wonderful creative space where eight of us would write songs, given a prompt uh, once a week, hand in your work via email, a little recording on your phone and the lyrics. And I was pretty nervous seeing uh, who was in this song club. Um, a, a mate from Nashville, Aussie expat Sam Hawksley, invited us to be part of it. And I thought, gee, uh, there's Josh in there. I better write some half-decent songs because, uh, you know, you want to impress your other mates in the scene. Sure. And that's kind of where we really connected after, you know, the years of seeing each other at different festivals. And it was uh, a pretty exciting thing to be a part of during a horrible time when there was that lockdown thing that we all had to go through Mm. and it was wonderful to have a creative outlet and a community to sort of just keep investing in, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, so I think probably what came out of that was listening to each other's songs each week and then Felicity made the invitation, why don't you stop in, bring your guitar and uh, we'll have a go at writing a song together. When you're passing by, when when you're allowed to. (laughs) Yeah, so uh, I did that and I don't think I ever left, actually. I bought a little banjo. (laughs) Felicity's a real banjo enthusiast. Yeah, when she saw that, I think she thought I was okay and I could stick around for a bit. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> the seal of approval with the banjo. Yeah. 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 So, oh, this guy's actually not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Another element to the whole backstory of it too, as far as our lives merging, we'd, we'd both come from pretty dark places and mm. maybe as we continue chatting, you might want to delve into a bit of that. But, you know, there'd been some personal tragedy and some upheaval in each of our lives coming into contact with each other, music and each other's company was just a real healer. And yeah. I think we, we both realised coming from a pretty dark, immediate past, we just saw something in each other that was, there was light, there was love, there was something beautiful and something to build on. And that's mm. what we both wanted. Yeah. yeah. Were you nervous to enter into a relationship again after being through the experiences that you had? Yeah, probably more nervous or um, uh, cautious because of children. I had two girls to consider, and Josh was also mindful of that. Josh had a dog that um, (laughs) he had to consider. (laughs) And I knew that he was really special because he mentioned that from his own heart, spoke to him about, you know, I really want to be mindful of your girls. And and I thought, oh, this guy's particularly special because he is caring about the whole scenario here, not just himself. And, yeah, it it was really 
lovely and the kids absolutely gravitated to him like a magnet and it, I had to tell them to, whoa, just go slowly now. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was really lovely. I felt, we all felt this beautiful peace, I guess, and yeah. uh, we're very lucky. And Felicity, I think I read also that it was your your mum and dad felt like Josh was sort of a bit of an angel sent from heaven as yeah. well. Absolutely. Well, my mum was, I think mum's in love with you too. <laughs> <laughs> My mum's in love I'm with Cam. I'm rather fond of her well. myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my, yes, my mum takes Cam's sides in all the arguments. I was like, "You're my mum, and you yeah. take his side. Like, what, what kind of a mother are you?" <laughs> yeah, I think there could be a bit of that here too. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Well, she rings Josh about the football scores and her tips for the week and, and yep. all of that, and she knows that Josh cares for their girls, you know, and mm. my dad as well. It was. Uh, their hearts were broken in losing their late uh, son-in-law and, yeah. you know, the tragic side of that was uh, he took his own life. So there was so much heartache and and whys and, and never these questions will never be answered. So my parents had a lot of heartache to deal with sure. as well as much as we did. And when that happens to your child, it doesn't matter what age, I think their hearts were broken too. So... Uh, it was nice to see there was a new rainbow in their daughter's sky again, which is pretty special. Oh, it's beautiful. How have your daughters, you know, how did you talk to them about the death of their dad and how have they been able to process it? Yeah, it's really, uh, in- it's, it's an ongoing journey for all of us and we knew that would be the case. I think each day it can throw up a, a new challenge with that, depending what the girls are going through. We've got our eldest now, who's a young teenager, and that comes with its, you know all about that, you guys, that yeah. comes with with its own hang-up. So yeah. throw a bit of that into the mix and there's some heavy days that she can't find the answers, we don't have the answers, and I, I keep coming back to love, just reminding both of the girls that they're loved yeah. and we're doing the best we can. And I think that uh, because she was the eldest, she struggled to show her emotion when she lost her dad and just let it out, whereas the younger one could just cry and cry and 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 ask the questions and let it out. And I think that was really healthy. Mm. And I was doing the same. I was letting it all out. Um, but yeah, the eldest one is, a, we're all in, individuals, so we all have our own journey. So we're all a work in progress. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, we just try to keep the conversations open, which is not always easy to do, especially at, at in that part of their, their life, because they've got so many things going on personally. And, you know, school is another whole thing to deal with. So any tips, we're here to take it on board. Yeah. Well, well, speaking of that, Josh, that's a lot. To, that's a lot to take on. And did you, have you done it through instinct or did you get some help to sort of find the right words for situations? How did you, how did you help yourself mm. help Felicity? Well, I think it's probably like a lot of life, it's learning on the job. I guess we do have our own instincts. You know, some people maybe are more tuned into those sensitive areas than than others. And I mean, I've always felt like I'm a sensitive kind of person, Mm. more on the emotional side. And there was something when I heard the story of, uh, you know, the Felicity and her girl's loss, it really broke my heart in a way that was quite exaggerated. Like our our meetings had been very brief. We didn't really know each other. I had Felicity's number in my phone just, you know, through connecting and, you know, randomly keeping in touch. But there wasn't, there, there wasn't really a, a real close friendship there. Mm. But I felt this real burden on my heart that I, I need to reach out and, and just, you know, say some words that, that may be meaningful or helpful. Um, but I was kind of struggling with this idea that, well, I don't know her really all that well. So I'm sure there's a lot of people rallying around and she might not even get the message. She may not appreciate it. But I couldn't shake this you know, kind of conviction that I, I really needed to do it. And when I finally just decided to act upon it, uh, she wrote back immediately. And apparently the, what I had said to her was was exactly what she needed to hear in that moment. So mm. it felt right from the get-go that, yeah, there, there was a sensitivity that, um, you know, w- was appreciated and uh, and everything kind of built from there, I guess. The whole industry really felt, I think, the loss of your husband as well. How How did they support you? as well through that time, Felicity? Mm. Well, uh, people like Josh, all these yeah. gorgeous messages that came from people I didn't know, mm. people that had worked with 
Glenn in in some form or another, either they, he played on their record or took their photos or did their graphic design or they watched him at a concert and they just loved his guitar playing. So, yes, Glenn was a, a musician, very talented, uh, but he did all these other skills as well. So he was loved by many and uh, a lot of people were, this, I called it the army of love, came to our <laughs> Our, our side and uh, and we were so lucky and I, I would say to the girls, we're lucky that we have this. There are people struggling and, and this happens to families every day in our beautiful country and they don't have this army of love so we have to just keep going and, and do the best we can. Mm. And I felt like, yeah, I owed the army. I've got to front up. I've got to keep going. It was interesting though that some of the messages that came through people needed me to help them, mm. which I found was quite an interesting uh, part of my journey as well. And it still is happening today. Mm. People that have had their own tragic um, stories to do with suicide, uh, they come after a show where we've been playing because, uh, and we're open to talk to people, but it is interesting that they need they want to tell their story, whether it's still heavy on them or whether it's light and free, mm. that they've been able to to find their new rainbow as well. It's 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 such a, a tsunami that happens to people when people take their lives. And I just, I wish more people understood that when they decide to go. They think they're, they're making this decision to help others, but it is so not the case. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Music is, for me anyway, one of the most cathartic things that I can do. It's when I've been in my most troubled times, darkest times, it's like, what happens? Oh, I've picked up my guitar or I'm sitting at my grandma's piano and <laughs> I've just had the most, I want to play it for you one day when I get to meet you, but my father is 83 years old mm. and he said to me about a year ago, he said, hey, Cam, do you know that song, Don't Let the Old Man In? And I said, oh, I know the quote. It's a Clint Eastwood quote, isn't it? And he said, yeah, no, it's a Toby Keith song. And I'm like, okay, Dad. Now, Dad's a businessman. He weaned me on his Neil Diamond records from, you know, 69 to 72, all that stuff. I love all that. <laughs> anyway, he goes, I want to sing it. I said, oh, good on you, Dad. And he goes, no, I want you, can you help me? Can you play guitar and maybe, you know, sing with me? I was like, oh, okay. Cut to two weeks or a week and a half ago, dad came up for a funeral and we're having dinner and it's just me and him. And I said, I picked up the guitar and I started playing it and he started humming along. I said, do you want to go give it a shot? We'll go out to the studio. I'll, let's record it. My dad and I made a song together <laughs> and, cool. and, it just, and it created a bond. Like I'm almost 60 years old. I, I felt as close to my father as I was... A little kid again, you know. It was Aww. like this sharing this moment of footy cards across a wood pile, you know. Mm -hmm. And and there and there we were sharing. And I listened to this, and it sounds like. Remember, Rick Rubin made those albums with Johnny Cash and Neil yeah. Diamond. Mm -hmm. It sounds like he sounds like that. Oh. And um, harmonize with him with something. That's my experience of, of music in its purest form. So oh, that sounds you, amazing. Yeah, <laughs> just, I mean, I know you guys relate to it. I know you do. You mentioned the song club. What was it like? Take us through that moment when you got together after doing the song club and now you're writing music together. And what was it like singing together intimately with the banjo and the guitar and your two voices? Yeah, it's it's really, it is a magical thing. You know, music, there's something very mysterious about it. There's a power in it that you can't mm. quite describe, but it's, it's very, it, it cuts very deep. And I love hearing that story. Um, you know, what a, what a precious memory you've got with your dad there. We've both had our, you know, stories of, of music cutting deep on those levels. I know for myself, I had a, a grandmother that ended up in a nursing home at the end of her life. And I used to go in well, every day, really, and just play music for her. Mm -hmm. And I made so many friends with the other residents and staff that were, were there. And uh, once she passed away, I kept going every week. And it was really such mm -hmm. a highlight of, of my week to go in there and just connect with people through music. Mm -hmm. And I think we had a really strong connection as soon as we picked up the instruments and played together, as, as we say, both coming out of, you know, a bit of a, a, a traumatic, a dark time, uh, there was something very freeing and very healing about it. 
And, uh, you know, the very first song that we wrote was on the little banjo that we mentioned before. And it was about kind of taking off into the wild unknown, you know, into, into the blue sky, not knowing exactly where you're going. Wanting having, to having go the, together. Wanting to go together. <laughs> if you've got the right travelling companion, you're on the right track. So mm. there was a lot of that associated with our earliest, you know, musical moments together. And uh, thankfully the journey's still unfolding and we're loving every step of it. Because you never know, though, do you, when you're singing with somebody else and playing, if you just, you might like them, but whether the gel is going to be there musically, but it was certainly there and I guess it's also a testament to all the years of Josh working with other people mm. in the waves, Donna and Vicky, two superb female artists in their own right. So it wasn't a strange thing for him to sing with another female voice. So uh, also watching Josh play the way that he does, I was just like, wow, this guy's a different guitar player. He's got his own thing going on. And, and not only does he play great, but he plays the guitars that he makes with his own hands. So I was fascinated oh, I about his... To talk, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you about that. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, special. I might have stolen your thunder there. Not at all, not at all. <laughs> but, um, it's, it, I, I grew up with my dad with his hands on uh, furniture and woodwork. He was a, an upholsterer. So I was fascinated to think, wow, you make your own instruments too and, and then he plays them and yes yeah, there's a lot to this guy <laughs> it seems like the perfect segue we've never done this on this podcast of, of having people perform it's normally just chat but we'd love to hear a song would you would you play one for us <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we've been talking a lot about, you know, the song club, the, the little banjo as well. So this is a song. It was literally the first week in the song club and Felicity mentioned that it all started with a prompt. So our friend would give us, you know, the two words or the sentence or whatever it was that you had to launch from and, and create your song off. And the very first week in, the uh, the prompt was spare parts. This is the right. song that I wrote <laughs> that week. You know, it was quite a terrifying proposition. I'd never done anything like it before. And uh, I felt that, well... <laughs> you know, spare parts, it had an automotive ring to it, but I'm not very mechanical, so it's a bit of a challenge. I had to do some exploring on the internet to find some terminology <laughs> that made it sound like I knew something about right. cars. I think the thing I love about this song is that it's it's kind of lighthearted. It's a little tongue-in-cheek ditty, but it's also kind of the story of, of a person who might be similar to an old car that's washed up on life's scrap heap, you know, and mm. doesn't run anymore and you need a bit of TLC and some spare parts and, you know, a bit, a bit of... Uh, <laughs> a bit of whatever you need to get rolling down the road again. And I, I think that was probably where both Felicity and I were at around that time. And this song and just the song club and music in, and each other's company in general kind of got us rolling down the highway again. So this is yeah. Spare Parts. Well, we never got started from pole position. Been round the track a time or two. Now old make and model got decommissioned. But a few spare parts will be good as new. My motor's been running like a three condition Ever since you came in view And you're shifting smoother than a new transmission From a little bit of TLC and lube Spare parts gonna hold us together Spare parts gonna carry us through If we get broke down or overheated You could work on me. I could work on you The road of life with its wear and tear can make things feel so hard But if we tinker around with these salvage spares It might keep us from the old junkyard I had a little blockage in my carburetor To clean my jets, change the gasket too Now when you press down hard on my accelerator This things are pumping like they're supposed to do. Just a little of a joke joke gets things started Girl, you upgraded my ignition No more rust and ruin with the broken heart Since you put me back in brand new condition with it Spare parts gonna hold us together Spare parts gonna carry us through If we get broke down or overheated You could work on me I could work on you The road of life with its wear and tear Can make things feel so hard but if we tinker enough with these salvage spares, it might keep us from the old scrapyard. Hey. The road of life with its wear and tear can make you obsolete. 
Now you're sitting so pretty And you're debonair So let's take it to the new backseat You got brand new globes And the old headlamps The high beams brighter than the dawn Such a pitiful song I used to sing Now listen to me honey when you're honking my horn All of our missions are burning clean We got a full tank of gasoline We got the spark plug sparking The crankshaft crank There's no denying these spare parts are gonna hold us together Spare parts are gonna carry us through If we get broke down or overheated You could work on me, I could work on you with these spare parts Spare parts We're gonna roll on down the road together with our spare parts Oh my gosh, um, yeah, how lovely. fun. <laughs> Your vocal blend is just gorgeous. Yeah. And you actually, the way you play together also is in harmony in a beautiful way. And and what, I don't you think that Bob Jane Team Art should like just pick up that song <laughs> for their advertising? Can, can we leave that with you? Right? Ellie, you do you know Hello? someone? Like, <laughs> like is it the pers- perfect automotive <laughs> yes. song ditty for like give them th- millions of bucks, don't you reckon? Well, <laughs> Felicity often makes the comment that she's never heard of a song with the word lube in it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So maybe, you know, I guess the tyres, Bob Jane team us, but maybe Express Lube, lube or something. Lube, lube yes. Mobile or something. Like any, any of the above. <laughs> we've got right, headlights really, of, and we've got pistons are pumping in there. We've got all yeah. sorts was, of sexual I just, innuendo. I, was, I, was, I love I was it. Waiting, I was waiting to hear if you mentioned muffler rings. And oh if I knew God. it was muffler rings, I'd be like, this guy does not know what he's talking about. <laughs> no, I might... I didn't dive that deep. I didn't have to go go to those depths. But I tell you what, there was a fellow after a gig in South oh, Australia, yeah. uh, you know, a year or so ago. He came up to me. He was so excited at the end of the gig, and he wanted to talk to me about the engine in his Tirana and probably forty five minutes of conversation. And uh, he did most of the talking. I think that's why he probably still thought at the end of that conversation that I did know something about cars. He bailed up Josh <laughs> proper. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Little did he know. He That's Googled. Right. So <laughs> like any any good collaborators, whose name is first? Is it Lennon and McCartney or McCartney <laughs> and Lennon? Well, only, just on the posters and on the album, it's like Felicity comes first because he's yeah. a gentleman. <laughs> there you go. I like that. How, well played. How much of your of your past and current relationships are in your songs or inspire your songs? All the above. Yeah. Present, past and the future is hopeful. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. It's all in there. It's it's all there. Don't you reckon? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think, you know, the the first album was very, well, it kind of chronicled the story of, of us getting together and there was a, a joy and a lightness to it. Uh, the album that came out last year. Um, Birdsong. Birdsong, our mm. second album. Probably almost peeled back um, the, the covers to, it's almost like a prequel to the first album in, in that it deals with a lot of the, the darker experiences that we'd gone through right and uh, you know Felicity's r- written a beautiful song about the you know her late husband and, and that whole experience a very powerful tune you know and I've written some songs coming out of the darkness that I'd been through but the thing I love about it is it's not in a necessarily a heavy way there's a hopefulness to it the, mm. the album's called Bird Song and on the cover there's a, a beautiful little fairy wren that's sitting on top of a cage so mm. there's this real theme of conquering the cage finding your voice and being free yeah. so whatever angle we come from you can't really as a songwriter it's hard to kind of extricate yourself from your song so i think everything we do together there's a lot of us in it um but yeah hopefully we're, we're putting a message out there that is is hopeful and uh, and inspiring to people speaking of inspiring where does the inspiration come from is it daily is it walking down the street is it listening to other people's other artists music is it- i mean you'd understand this cam i think it's wherever it can strike you at the most unusual times when you you are having a conversation with someone. We were, you know, just at a festival the other day and you're watching other artists or you're seeing kids' baskets. It's just a, a myriad of opportunities where those inspirations will tap into your, your heart or your head and, and you think, oh, that's be a great idea for a song. And sometimes you write it down, sometimes you let it go and oh. then you, I never catch it again. Do you yeah. 
Yeah, that Whenever. happens. I think that happens to everyone. Mm. Yeah. You know, one thing that was interesting about the song club is that you just had to be inspired on a weekly basis. You, yeah, you had to create right. something at least. Yeah. Mm. And I'd never really worked that way. I'm the kind of person that just waits it waits for it to fall out of the sky. Mm. And um, you know, and oftentimes it doesn't. I might go for six months or a year and I didn't really write anything. But what's happening in that time is that even though you might not be conscious of it, you're soaking up all of that input from life and from what you experience mm. and what you see. And then it has a way of kind of coming out in a song once the inspiration strikes down the line. Yeah, uh, the, the Song Club was certainly an interesting experience where, well, you've got to produce something by Thursday at midnight. And, uh, or it was, you're out. It was actually surprising. Is that what happened? You're One out. week's grace. One yeah, week's got, grace. Fair yeah. Good. yeah, two strikes and you're out. Yeah. Okay. But I was really surprised at how often I was able to write a song that I might not have necessarily had a real flash of inspiration for, but at the end of it, something mm. from deep inside me had really come out. It's, it's once again, it's like music itself. It's, it's a mysterious thing that you can't always explain, but it's very powerful when it happens. So that was your first album together, the Song Club, yeah. right? So that was mm -hmm. songs that you'd both worked on during the Song Club and made an album from that. Yeah, basically. And, yeah. and then when we got the chance to have a cup of tea in the same space, then we wrote, a few together. wrote some together. Yeah, and, beautiful. And, uh, yeah, it was lovely. And I know a Bird Song just won at Tamworth as well, right? Did did the Song Club and that did really well. Like you're on a winning streak here, you two. <laughs> like clearly, it's it's clicked well. Well, it's been lovely that uh, we we've also grown uh, not only in our lives together, but musically. Yeah. The first album was just the pair of us playing everything. We produced, engineered it ourselves, and then for the, the Bird Song album, we called in a couple of mates to help co-produce and also play. You know, if there's a full drum kit, the whole percussion happening there. So we were really lucky. And Josh is also on the electric guitars on this mm. one. So we've fleshed out the sound a bit more and it's just great. I don't know what's going to happen next, but um, we're, we're ha certainly having fun. Beautiful. But it, it was really lovely to get that, you know, that recognition. Obviously, you don't really do music to, to win awards um, but, you know, just to have what we've done yeah. um, recognised in that way was really great. The first album, it got nominated for, I think, four Golden Guitar yeah. Awards mm. and an ARIA Award, actually. That's right. Um, we didn't pick up any of yeah. them, but uh, this time around, the Birdsong record got six nominations and we took home three. Yeah, so oh, it was, it. It's lovely. It was really, yeah, really lovely. Awesome. Yeah. It's a great feeling. <laughs> it's a great feeling standing up there receiving something, especially when, you've, when there's a community behind you as well. Yeah, that's a, a nice way to say it. It certainly... Um, it can be terrifying. Well, it, yeah, it is. Like, it? We literally didn't think we were going to take home anything, so we didn't prepare anything <laughs> to say. And the very first award of the night, our names get called out. And it's like, oh, wow, oh, what's <laughs> going to happen? Go. Here we go. Here we go. So you yeah. step up to the microphone and start talking and hope something I hope it you know, coherent okay. and appropriate comes out. Do you ever have creative disagreements and how do you handle them if you do? Oh, no, we don't. Oh. Do we, have we? I don't think we have. Wow. wow. Awesome. Maybe that'll be the third album. There you go. <laughs> a, little bit of, a little bit of tension never hurts anything. I, I think, I, there, were, there is tension uh, uh, when sometimes if we're on the clock and it's getting late in the studio yep. and Josh wants to do another guitar part and I'm going, no, that sounded incredible. You are not recording, re-recording that and he wants to do it and I'm going, no. Stop! You must walk away. Put the guitar down. So that's the only time there's tension. Felicity, yeah, right. you know you've been in the business long enough. The guitar player's lament is, "Can I have another go?" <laughs> I know. You know yes. that. Yeah, I know that. But sometimes <laughs> they need to be told. Just put put it down. Walk away. And the same for a vocalist, right? Sometimes yeah. we get caught up in our own heads and think, "Oh no, no, no! I'll sing that note better, or I'll whatever." But it's not about that. It's about the whole whole performance and the feeling what you're getting and you know, all that is really important as yeah. much as a singer and player. And, um, yeah, so that's the only time there's ever tension. <laughs> are, your, are your girls musical? Yeah, they are, actually. Yeah. And um, it's lovely to see because they can come in the studio. The eldest one is able to operate the studio, record... She's, she's recorded her own vocal, violin, guitar parts and harmony and oh. then mixed it all down. Mixed it down and sent it as an MP3. <laughs> so so she's, she's pretty savvy. But it's also about letting the door, leaving it open to kids and saying, this is how it works and, and just... Yeah, explore it but just don't delete any of our yeah, stuff. don't hit <laughs> that right. file. So it's great and, and they've been busking in Tamworth for the last few years and, yeah, so fiddles, violin, that's the same thing. Fiddle and violin, what am I saying? <laughs> uh, 
fiddle because sometimes it depends who you, what company you're keeping if you call yeah, it a violin. I was going to say it's fiddle to some violin to others. Yes, you know? Potato, right. potato. Yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> but With they're going great. Our eldest is, she's got a beautiful singing voice, but she's oh. just a bit nervous to, to do it. But our youngest, Sounds like 18, she takes after her mum. <laughs> well, she can sing, mum can't. But uh, <laughs> luckily the two, our two girls got dad's talent. But the youngest one has just... She's had nary a lesson on anything and she's just picked up her sister's guitar because her sister's away. And she's come down, she goes, I've just written this song. And she sits down and she plays us this song. Oh, and your cool. dad's chin's wobbling and over there, you know, because it's like, my daughter, the musician. It's <laughs> but it's so, it's so gorgeous to hear that. I just, it, it's so special for me being not musical to watch my children be musical. I mean, you, you two live it and know it so well and I'm, I'm sure it's still special. But that was that was really amazing when, when yeah. Bodes oh. did that. Ali, Ali bought me a loop pedal and I can't seem to come in on the one. I just can't seem to, you know, it's always a gap. <laughs> so it's like, oh, God. <laughs> Bodie goes into my studio. She goes, Dada, can I try your loop pedal? I said, if you figure it out, can you teach me? Half anyway, an hour later. Half an hour later. <laughs> she's got a she's, she's bloody playing some Chris Isaac song and, and just, oh, you great. know, singing along. I can hear it. and It is so cool. It's, Kids are very clever these days. They yeah, are. they really are, aren't they? The fact that she's, you know, that's inspiring you and there's also, hey, check it out, Dad, like this lovely. Yeah. There's a nice connection yeah. to make there through mm. music. You, mm. you know, you spoke about your dad and here mm. you are with your girls. So it's really lovely and we can't show the girls too many things. They don't want us to help them. They're yeah. very independent and yep. I'll work it out for myself yep. and then they'll show us and, and if we say, how about that chord there? Ah, that's the way I want to play it. So, um, you know, yeah. more power to these young kids, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, with, when Bodes played that song for us, it was I just I just wanted to listen to it because Ali's been great with me. She's she's helped me just to shut the hell up, let the kids, <laughs> don't interrupt them, don't tell them what they did wrong, nothing or what they could do better. So I just shut up now. And then she played the song and then she stopped. And um, and there was no chorus, and there was no there was there was n there was nothing repeated. It was just beautiful lyrics and and this wonderful chord progression that she'd figured out. And then I said to her, "Ah, oh, um, is there a chorus?" And she went, mm, "That's all I've done." And I was like, "Oh, okay." And then I just luckily I stopped myself because <laughs> I was just like, "Well." I mean, you guys, you, you young guys today writing, you, you're writing your own way. It doesn't have to be a chorus, you know, it doesn't mm. have to be anything in there. That's great. Go for it, you know, keep going. Play some more. <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> so you nailed it, Dad. I think I got, I think I did, <laughs> I didn't I? You, I think you did it. Really I good advice. There. Yeah. I, I'm going to take that because I think I'm, I, I can use that. Do a bit more. Hold back and say less. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know it's hard, especially because you're you've got so much knowledge, and I, yeah. I I get that when you hear something where you'd be, God, if they did it that way, it might be better. But yeah. but it's just not the just fact, music though. It's, yeah, it's life <laughs> in general. Yeah, it's yeah. It's easier yeah, to hold back. One. It's yeah. easier to hold back in the musical sphere, but it's the other areas that you feel oh, like it's not that easy to do. Finding yeah. the language that it doesn't feel like you're lecturing, but you also need to give some advice here, there, and. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fine line. Hard to yeah, know when to come tricky. in. Is there anything that you would love, the, the people that listen to your music, is there something that you would love to know that they take away from, from hearing your music? Yeah, I, I, it's always we want them to go away feeling some joy, you know. Yeah. Um, keep, keep the joy is important. Is a, is a bit of a tagline certainly um, that we like to use because if you can tap into that, even in through the dark times, even when you're somewhere in a foreign place and you don't have your circle around you, that you can just go, where's my joy? There's my joy. Mm. I'll be okay. Yeah. I think that's really important and uh, lo just love people to go away feeling that they've got a sense about us and and that we're just people having a crack at life too, like everybody else. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I, I think a lot of that... You know, the joy coming from connection, like music's such an amazing way to connect. It brings people together. You know, when, when you hear the stories of people that have gotten so much out of a song that you may have written and it's gotten through a hard time or it's been the soundtrack to a beautiful chapter of their life, mm. it's really amazing to hear that. And I feel like every time we play, just recently we did some shows in really rural areas mm. and, oh. you know, there's a strong community there, but everyone's kind of on the land and they're spread out and it takes an event like 
a gig that we put on mm. to get everyone together. And uh, just at the end of the night, we had such great interaction with people that had their own stories that they resonated from from our songs. It, it triggered something in their experience and they wanted to come and tell us about it. So it was just the, yeah. the reminder of you know how important it is to connect mm. and uh, and how music is such a great way of doing that. Yeah. What's next for you two? Just more, more music? Are you touring? Like are you still yeah. touring Birdsong or what's what's happening? All of that. Yeah. We are hitting the studio. We've got something else planned to have a, a release later on this mm. year right. and we've got more tour dates and we've got some big festival appearances. So, and there's a bit of painting to do on the house, isn't there, Josh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The real stuff. Yeah, real right. Stuff, yeah. <laughs> a bit of parenting in there parenting, as well. Why yeah. not? A bit Family of dog walking. First. Yeah, dog. Yeah. <laughs> what about um, some Lutheran? Oh, yeah. uh, well, I would love to get back to doing that. And in fact, I've got a guitar that is all but finished and I just mm. haven't had the opportunity to to get it done for the longest time. So uh, hopefully I can get back to that because that's another real happy place for me. Oh, okay. Can you quickly tell him the story of the... Bob Dylan, the guitar. Please tell us the story. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, be, being on tour with the Waifs, um, one of the great things we got uh, the chance to do was to open for Bob Dylan. <gasps> and uh, we did like 40 dates with him oh. through oh. through the States. And uh, it was right at that time I was getting interested. In fact, I'd built a guitar or two, but I always wanted to build a J45. And that was what he was playing on stage. I asked his guitar tech, who we'd, we'd become friendly with all the band and the crew and um even Bob himself a little bit, but uh, yeah, his guitar tech was happy um, to let me have a look at one of Bob's J45s. I said, just, you know, one of the spare ones. Um, you know, I can take some photos and measure a few things and put a mirror inside and have a look. And mm. uh, he bought me Bob's actual stage guitar. And that's what I, I traced the shape of it off and took measurements and did all my research. And that's the, the J45s I make are actually literally kind of Re recreations of Bob's guitar. Oh That's my god! Wow. <laughs> I, I have Thought to say, like that. I've got to That's tell you awesome. that there's a guy on Instagram. It's a guitar building website. I think it's out of Brooklyn in New York. They're putting all the struts on the soundboard, so they're uh -huh. they're bra putting all the bracing on there, doing all the chiseling and things like that. And it's all done to this gorgeous acoustic music, finger picked sort of stuff. Usually, it's incredible, and it's must be so calming is it bringing wood back to life so it sings it, mm. it is it's there's something so satisfying in fact when i'm doing it i think to myself this is even better than playing them mm. but then of course when you get to build an instrument and then play it the first time you string it up and hear what its voice is like and then you know even beyond that you get to write a song on it and then perform it live right. um record it's it's quite you know i mean guitar players musicians have a real relationship with their instruments mm. and it's even deeper when you've actually created it with your own hands as well. Oh, you clever. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to throw ourselves into the shower. Right. For two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. Two shower. shower. We do, we ask you a couple of questions. Would you both answer for us as short as possible because we are into water conservation. <laughs> Question number one. What's your best quality? Oh, my smile. <laughs> my softer side. Who do you admire? Oh, my mum. My mum too, but I, I think she's all right as well. <laughs> <laughs> words or melodies? Mm, words. Do I have to choose? <sighs> yeah, that's mean. That's a mean choice, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, if she said words, I'll go melodies. Yeah, then we can work together. 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 <laughs> yeah. um, what do you miss when you're not together? Uh, a cup of tea and conversation. Felicity lights up uh, any space she's in, and when I'm not in that space, I miss the light. I can see that. I'm getting all teary. Oh, I'm here. <laughs> my I'm, chin's I'll starting to wobble. I'll just flip him a 50. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a beautiful thing final to say. question. Yeah. This gorgeous thing to say. Your partner in one word. I've gone first for all of them. How about you go first? Precious. Oh, I was going to say lovely. Yeah. <laughs> with the Urquhart, Josh Cunningham, thanks for speaking with us today. It's been a great chat. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been lovely. Thank you. You're wonderful. Thanks, guys. Uh, all the best with everything. And, and, yeah, just live music is alive and well when it comes to you two. It's just gorgeous. Oh, so Thanks, guys. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your song as well. Uh, yeah. Our pleasure. She has the most beautiful voice. Like even 
as she speaks. She's got a beautiful speaking voice, but then her singing voice. Wow. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So I, I loved his playing. Yeah. What he was doing mm. and keeping that whole, keeping that tempo and the way he was playing was yes. pretty magical. Smooth. And, and yeah, and at the same time, I thought the way their voices blend. Even, yeah. Like even when they're speaking, right? And yeah. And they're making room for each other through the conversation. Ah, it's been really nice. Yeah. Really nice listen. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I'm keen to listen to, to more of their music too. Yeah. They've got a, a song that they won this year at Tamworth. It's called Size Up, which mm. is a really fun tune as yeah, well. Yeah, you can see that on YouTube. We yeah. looked it up where well, there's a bunch of their songs on YouTube if you want to see them as well as hear them. Yeah. But, you know, go out and get their album. They're, they're a beautiful couple. They're kind. They've been through a lot and mm. they're making really good music together. Yeah, I, I was listening to Ethan Hawke talk about poetry the other day and he said, you know, most of the time poetry is unnecessary in our lives until something really big happens and we don't know how to put words to it. So we'll pick up Blake or we'll pick up Wordsworth or we'll grab a poem and because that seems to be what it helps us express what's deeply in our heart. And I think that's the same with country music. Mm. And when you hear just the rawness and the richness of a, of a natural voice without much production. Yeah. There's not, you know, there's not a, lot, a whole lot of reverb and loops and garbage going on you actually just listening to two people singing. Mm, true beautiful storytelling it really is it's it's so good so there you go country music man that's where it's at that's her oh hellfire <laughs> hellfire <laughs> all right thanks so much for listening everyone till soon bye